much of the Stanley Cup playoffs is goaltending, like we've said. Mm-hmm. And I have Un- a trivia- unless you're Flames and Oilers game one. I have a trivia question for you. Right? Yeah. Since April first, who do you think leads the NHL in goals saved above expected? And I'll give you a reference. Okay. Okay. First place. It's 22.9 goals saved above expected in 21 games. And in second place, it's 15.5 goals saved above expected in 23 games. Okay. And it's since when? Since April 1st. And this is not an April Fool's joke. You sure about that? Who who do you think's number? Who who do you think's first in the league in goals saved above expected? Above expected. Uh, Igor. No. He's second. Oh. Is it Andre? <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's not even Andre? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Who's first? Auntie Ranta. Nope. <laughs> no? Oh, no. Mike Smith? <laughs> it's Mike Smith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's a speaking of gold that <laughs> All right, this will get us into the Western final. Like yeah, this, good, good transition. I like that. <laughs> oh. Okay, let me just wrap up the Eastern final saying I'm fucking hyped. Yeah, all right. Predictions. Who who we got? Whew. Oh man. I want to say Tampa's reign of terror ends here, but no. All right. I'm gonna say Tampa and seven. All right, and I am going to say that hockey doesn't give a fuck about your feelings, so it's going to be Rangers in seven. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of people are pissed about the Rangers moving on because of their path and all the goalies getting injured. That 100% means to me that the Rangers are going to move on again and Uh. people are going to get even more pissed. So (laughs) I'm going to pick Rangers in seven just because it feels like what's going to happen. Well, they've already worn out their Tony chance. What are they going to do now? (laughs) <laughs> let me tell you i understand people are pissed about like oh you know to me if they beat the fucking tampa bay lightning you better shut the hell up because uh, yeah we're out of <laughs> out of complaints at that point right but the west i know we talked about the west in our last episode and kind of previewed it more or less fucking mike smith oh man he's arrived again <laughs> he's fucking reborn Oh, it's weird, right? Have you seen his career save percentage in the playoffs? No. It is weirdly high. Weirdly high? Yeah. I mean, it, he's also not been there often enough. He's actually been there quite more often than you think. Granted, he's also 41. So In sure. 41 playoff games, mm-hmm. it's a 931 save percentage. Oh, good for and you, Mike. Damn. Or goals against average. It's not bad either. It's kind of crazy. You could just, you wouldn't really think twice about it because he had one appearance. I think it was 2011. He played a little bit for Tampa. Um, and then obviously the West. What? Yeah. Huh. He was. It was. It was uh, the the legendary tandem of Mike Smith and Dwayne Rollison. Oh, okay, and, okay, that was a while ago then. All right. So, and then the, obviously the next year he was with the Coyotes. They got to the Western Conference Final. He was dynamite in those playoffs. He was on. Un, he was unbeatable, and the only guy who was even more unbeatable was was Jonathan Quick. <laughs> I'm not even. If, if if the Kings don't win that series, the Coyotes might have a cup. The, I think the Kings oh. might be pulling a cup from the Coyotes, which is crazy to think about. Is that, that could, Coyotes team absolutely going to beat the Devils? Could have kept him in the city longer. Could have kept him in the state longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, who knows? Maybe if they had a cup, they wouldn't be playing at a fucking college or in great now. <laughs> <laughs> um. On the other end of the ice, you got Darcy Kemper for Colorado. Kemp's been awesome. And it's nice that, you know, he can still kind of relax for the most part. Well, the last 
two series he has. He's going to have his hands full this series. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> we, we talk about the goaltending duel that's in the East. And this, now we're going to talk about offense. Uh, now we're going to talk about machine gun fire. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> we're talking, oh, you don't talk about firepower. We're gonna take, get to the chopper. <laughs> That's where we're at right now. You know, Laura, love me some why it, references. Let me tell you, you know that I'm a huge analytics geek. I mean, and you are the resident nerd. It's not, yes, it's not just analytics, but everything like that you know about hockey. You should look at this Final Four and say. Bolts abs. Right. Why does it feel like we're getting Rangers Oilers? Why? Yeah. It's... <laughs> I honestly <laughs> think we might be getting Rangers Oilers, and I don't think the world is quite prepared for it. So tonight's the first game of the Western Final, as of recording this. Right. Mm-hmm. We made jokes last episode that you know. This is JJ versus CC, right? This is because it, it is, and that's it is. it's weirdly what you are more excited for. <laughs> he was ejected Austin versus Cody CC. <laughs> I'm so excited for that man. But you know, everybody Ooh, offensive fire <laughs> Jack Johnson breakaway. No, kick. okay. So if you want to like the hardest shot competition as he <laughs> fires it into the corner. <laughs> I actually saw a couple of um couple of jay fresh tweets or dom tweets or whatever i want to say it was jay fresh it looked like his model uh cody has been actually pretty dynamite yeah he's actually been pretty good which makes it even funnier <laughs> it's, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around cody cc being effective i'm not against it it's just no. it's different for me i didn't i didn't see it coming he's actually looked pretty good and it's not even just the like, like eye test wise. I've watched like the, most of the Oilers games this postseason, and every time I watch them, I'm like, he looks pretty damn good. Like it's it's, <laughs> not just, it's not just those little nerd stat things that you know people seem to hate about analytics. Like no, just watch the games. He looks pretty good. For and I think that's, that's, like yeah, that's been our like our whole thing about Cody Cece though is it's not that he can't be a good player. It's that you can't employ him 25 minutes a night and expect him to be effective. Right. He's really good when you're giving him 16, 17 minutes a night on like the third pair. Mm-hmm. That's when he's at his best. And the Oilers have done a pretty good job of putting him in, in, in positions to succeed. Right. And you got to give Jay, Jay Woodcroft a lot of credit for that. You're, you're riding your ponies on the back end with Nurse and usually probably like Bouchard. And Bouchard's been excellent you know i mentioned it last podcast i can't understate how amazing he's been this postseason specifically Mm -hmm. uh you obviously got the leadership qualities ish in uh in dunks back Mm -hmm. there yeah (laughs) which you know despite 2010 yes yes He's but, still a very good defenseman, even at this age, more or less, for leadership and what have you. Um, so he's back there. You got CC and Barry. Here's what the thing that? I found interesting. Okay, what's that vibration noise you got going? <laughs> Something was vibrating. <laughs> I was. Uh... Weird. I, I was. I don't know. You got a ghost in your house. Good. I love ghosts. <laughs> so five on five entry defense chance rate. Mm-hmm. So this is percentage of entry attempts that Actually, led to a chance. Um, with a minimum of four targets per game. So the lower the percentage is, the better you are at um defending teams' entries into the offensive zone and preventing scoring chances. Mm-hmm. So the top three, okay. Number one, Devontae's. No, no real surprise there, right? No. Number two, I was a little surprised by mm-hmm. Eric Johnson. EJ, huh? EJ's been really good this postseason. Yeah, Guess I mean, he has, but like, huh. Guess who number three is? It's not Cody, is it? No. Uh, and this is prevention? 
Yes. So this is, you know, proficiency in, in, you know, defensively preventing teams, you know, entering the zone and getting, you know, scoring opportunities that way. Kale? Nope. No? Not who you would expect. Huh. Okay. So then I can't say Evan. No, you can't say Evan because, like I said, remember I mentioned last podcast his his even strength defense was, you know, he, he's not a good he's not great defensively, but that's okay because that's what you expect from him because he's so damn good offensively and in the neutral zone. Right, that's where his strengths are. Who but is it defensively though? in the postseason? He, he's been really good at preventing teams with their entries. Who is it then? Who's it's Evan Bouchard? Oh, it is Evan. Okay, yeah. I was like, so. Okay. So, so it, yeah. let me let One me reach two is EJ, three is Bouchard, and four and five, Cal Foot and Eric Chernak. Put away your charts because I want you to know these. Hell yeah, let's go. Five on five zone entry denial rate mm-hmm. in the second round. Number one, our boy, Cody CC. <laughs> now granted again this is second round stats but like elite defensively (laughs) and then here's this one there's not a better defenseman in the national hockey league (laughs) uh here's another so y'all ain't ready for cod smites (laughs) you're not ready for cc smite (laughs) five five on five defensive zone breakups in the second round is it cc so this is, uh, you know, plays broken up in the defensive zone at five one five. Right. Num- number one, Country Miller. Yeah, Miller's been excellent. Number two, Adam Fox. Mm-hmm. Number three, it's Cody Cece. God. <laughs> <laughs> and then number four is Devon Taves. Yeah. So Cody Cece, like, Devon like Taves, like it can't be understated how good. Bouchard and CC have been in these playoffs, but also not to get back to the East, but like we mentioned earlier, Andre Miller, man. People need to stop sleeping on him. He's uh, no, yeah, exactly. He's such a good defenseman. But it's funny, we've talked about the goaltending and you know, defense or whatever, and more or less just Cody CC. Kel McCarr's gonna carry things. Devon Taves is gonna carry things for the abs. Here's the thing. Everybody in the world, I think, would love to see Avs Lightning because we would get to see McKinnon versus Stamkos and, you know, Rantanen versus Kucherov and mm-hmm. Kale McCarr versus Victor Hedman. Right. And, uh, and you know what we're going to get? We're going to get fucking Mike Smith and Cody CC <laughs> versus Barkley Goodrow. Mick versus Mac is the main attraction, though. It is. It, okay, so we'll get to Mick versus Mac. Okay. Predictions. Uh-huh. Who do you think has the better series, Nathan McKinnon or Connor McDavid? <sighs> I think... <sighs> I think... Connor puts up more points. McKinnon puts up more goals. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does make sense. I think Connor puts up more points, and I also think Connor puts up more wins. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking the Oilers in six here. I'm going to take Colorado in six. And, and, and understand. Uh, and this isn't just because I have Colorado in my bracket. Right. Understand if you're a Colorado fan, be like, man, what the hell? He picked he picked St. Louis thing against this and he's picking it. It's nothing against the abs. It's no. absolutely nothing against the I love the abs. But to me, it's just what feels <laughs> what fe- oftentimes in hockey I look at things and I'm like, what makes less sense? That's what's going to happen. <laughs> well, yeah, because hockey makes no sense in general (laughs) so that is why i hockey never makes sense believe us i'm looking at everything here and i'm saying oh the abs are clearly the better team so i'm Uh picking the pointers so the so the secondary scoring first of all 
Yeah. You've Gabe Landeskog, Miko Rantanen, Nazem Kadri. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Andre Burakovsky. Mm-hmm. Um, the bottom six has been really good scoring wise too. Chushkin. Found the Chushkin. The bottom six is Thank really chipped in. When they, yeah. JT looked really good last round. He hasn't chipped in offensively yet, but Nico Sturm's really good defensively. You know, you got Alex Manson. Duhok. You got Manson and Sturm down there shutting guys down. Um, mm-hmm. But then, yeah, New Hooks looked really good. Um, Darren Helm, then, again, scoring the anniversary yeah, series Darren. winner. And then, you know, then you look at their, their back end and you're like, oh, my God, Kale McCarr and Devon Taves. And, and those two are going to really put up all the points. Oh, and Byram there. and Ryan and, Murray and Josh Manson. And, but and I raise you one Cody CC. <laughs> <laughs> Who who win? Who win? Who would win the entire Colorado Hamlet? roster or one Cody CC play? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I'll take the CC every time. <laughs> god, it's just you and your run and get of just bad analytical numbers. <laughs> like, wow. Um, but yeah, the abs are completely front loaded. Yes. Like all the way up and down their forward lines. Yes. And then the Oilers, you have the two headed monster mm-hmm. with Evander Kane. Mm-hmm. Which. It's Zach Hyman and Ryan is, Nugent Hopkins and all those guys. Like, yeah. It, it all, see, it, they're the engine. They're absolutely the engine that runs this thing. But, yeah. you know, they, they drive for Kane and all those other guys. They're producing because of them. To me, the X factor in this series. It has be, to be depth. It has to be depth. To me, the two guys that are going to need to step up for the Oilers mm-hmm. are going to be Kyler Yamamoto yep. and Yessi Puliyarvi. Yes, because these guys have been cold the entire time. And I think the two guys that you're going to want to look for in the Avalanche, I think JT Confer mm-hmm. is one of them. And then really the other one I think is Darcy Kemper. Like, I know that goaltending is important for every series. So, it's mm-hmm. like, it's kind of cliche to put a goaltender for one of your X factors. I can't remember who has this quote, but, you know, I want to say it was Jeff Merrick quoting somebody else, but like, hockey should just be called goalie, right? That's the whole be all yeah. end all. It is the name of the game. And I think we're at a point now. We know Mike Smith can do this in the postseason. He's really, he's at the very least turned it back on from yes, previous years. Been, he's been excellent. Mm-hmm. So, to me, it comes down to he doesn't have to be better or even match it. He just has to be close. He doesn't it, have to be a world beater. Twenty in this series, he just has to be a nine fifteen. Yeah, he doesn't have to be a world beater. He doesn't, you know, because we he know just, his. He can't, he can't lose them games. He he gets run support. He gets goals. Hundred percent. And there's going to be some games where he just has to be good enough, and there's going to be some games where he has to be better than just good enough. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're not asking the world of him. If he can finish this series with, say, a 9-14 save percentage, the Avalanche should, should probably win the series. How much of a treat is it that at the end of the day, we're going to get to see either Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl or, or Nathan McKinnon and Kale McCarr. And Kale McCarr go for a Stanley Cup. It's great. And my, fr- I remember like my, <laughs> like one of my favorite memories of my time at Canisius, my freshman year, being able to cover the Frozen Four. I got to see Kale McCarr play in a championship game. And now he's going to be competing to potentially get to the Stanley Cup final just not even four years later. Right. Time flies, man. Fun, th- crazy. <sighs> You're telling he was, me he was just at UMass not that long ago, and now he is a top three defenseman. You're telling me, man, I'm almost two years removed from mine, and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> like what happened other than a friggin' global pandemic? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's still that still drives me crazy, man. Just, I was in the middle of it's shooting, crazy. he was in college before COVID happened, but it didn't really feel like it was that long ago. <laughs> Well, like for me too, because remember, I've told you the story before. Mm-hmm. I was in the middle of shooting two big projects 
We were going into our spring break before everything shut down. We were in the middle of our spring break when everything shut yeah. down. Because we were about to go back home for spring break right when we figured out that everything was about really kind of to shut down. So I brought most of my stuff back. <laughs> You're just like, all right, we're not going back anyway. And I was just like, hey, we're not fucking coming back. See y'all. Love you. See you later. You're the this family. Is- this is crazy though, because like this is um, the West at very least. You know these these teams haven't made these teams haven't made it this far in a very long time mm-hmm. as franchises yeah. go. Yeah, because I Oilers last time here was what two thousand six, two thousand six, and then the Avs last time was two thousand two, right? Oh two or oh one. I think it was the oh one. I think. So the I think the last time the Abs made the Cup final was two thousand one, and the last time they made the Conference final was oh two. I believe you're. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Because they, I yes, because they faced the um, two thousand two. I think was the Patrick Waugh Statue of Liberty save. If I'm yes. not mistaken. <laughs> How crazy is that that we don't even oh remember God. something from our era. Or that we remember well, something like that. It's one of the funniest bloopers of all time. Him just like making an unbelievable save, one of the greatest saves I think we've ever seen in NHL history. Ugh, yeah. And then it's ruined because he dropped the fucking puck. <laughs> right. So yeah, we've made our predictions. Abs and Edmonton. Edmonton for you, Abs for me, both in six. 